Harris. Well, good morning. What a beautiful day outside, right? And it's a great day inside. We're going to be celebrating uh, the Lord today and all that he has done. We've got a lot of things going on. Um, first of all, some announcements. Thanks to everybody who um, helped out with Halloween or brought candy. We had a huge crowd on Halloween. We, um, when they left, there was a big old livestock trailer full of 45 kids and a handful of adults. We had a bouncer at the back door, um, and that was good. I am told that as they picked up kids that were over 50, and somebody had said 59 kids at one point, and then as they got close to their home, they would get out, or as they got cold, and other kids got in, and other kids got out, and uh, it was a great time. Um, thanks to everybody here in Sylvia who uh, gave candy to the kids. They loved it. They came back here so excited about all the candy they had. Uh, I encouraged them all to eat it all that night. <laughs> that way their parents can deal with it and the teachers don't have to the next day. But uh, I don't think anybody took me up on that, but I have been challenging, especially the kids that I have in class, to eat all of their Halloween candy as quickly as possible and have it all gone before Monday. <coughs> But uh, that's mostly self-preservation, that's what that is. But anyway, uh, thanks to everybody who made that a fun night for kids. Isn't it fun to run around and get candy as kids? And it's fun to give out candy to kids. Um, later today, we're going to be, um, oh, I should read my list. Um, along with Hank, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, hello. I'm ready for Thanksgiving, how about y'all? Yeah. Along with the Halloween stuff, I do need to publicly thank um, Derek Zonker and Used Farms for providing the truck and the trailer, and Darren Music for helping uh, manage and put it all together. We couldn't do it without them. Uh, we really could not. So a um, couple of other announcements later today. We're going to formally recognize B. Lanning and welcome her into membership in our church, and so that's a a special day for us. Um, thanks to everybody that helped with our, our teen enchilada fundraiser last Sunday, came out and ate or ordered stuff to go. Um, that is going to be uh, put to use, the, the funds we put to use starting this Friday when we take the teens to our annual lock-in down in Wichita. Um, still, I think it's the wrong name because they do not lock us in, they lock us out. But uh, we will leave here Friday about 7 p.m. from the church with a couple of van loads of middle school and high school excited kids. We'll go down to Wichita, we'll have a worship service, and then we'll have pizza at 11 o'clock, and then things start. Uh, we will go to the trampoline park, we will go to the ice skating rink, and we will go to a place called All Star Sports where they can golf and drive go-karts and all kinds of things. And then uh, that goes all night long. We'll come back about 6.30 in the morning on Saturday morning on, on Veterans Day the 11th. So um, if you are awake this Friday at some point, if you would pray for us, pray for the drivers. Uh, it's a long night. It's a lot of fun, but it's a long night. And for some reason, it seems like the drive home is much longer than the drive there. So, um, but, but pray for us, uh, if you would, that we would have a good time. The, the kids always love it. It's a chance for them to uh, grow as a team and to grow spiritually, to do some fun, goofy stuff um, in the name of Jesus. You know, I don't think we do enough fun stuff in the name of Jesus. Um, I think we wait until we're adults to find out that it's fun to follow Jesus, right? I never knew as a kid how much fun and freedom I could have following Jesus. This is one of those times. Um, and uh, not lastly, but uh, maybe lastly, thank you from my family and from me for all the, all the things on Pastor Appreciation Month. Um, the cards and, and gift and the, the, um, the prayers and the texts and the messages and all of that stuff. Um, we really love you. We love being here. And so thank you from my family and from me. Thank you so much. Um, we love being here. We have a couple of uh, prayer requests uh, from our congregation. Please continue to pray for Burl. Burl's here today, if you haven't noticed. Uh, yeah. Um, he's the star of the show. You and Jesus. Kind of the star of the show. The rest of us are just kind of here. Um, but anyway, um, welcome back. It's been a couple of weeks, friend. 
It's good to see you. Continue to pray for Burl and um, for uh, Kelly and Dale as, as uh, they go through life together out at uh, Kelly and Dale's place. Mm -hmm. So pray for them. Continue to pray for Patty Eust uh, and uh, for Gary Walker, as well as uh, B's friend Peggy Smith. She, uh, she and I sent a few messages last night. She's out in California, and Peggy is facing a very long surgery this week. And so um, if you would pray for her, and um, there is a whole list. There it is. There's a whole list um, up on the, the screen here, if you can see that well, or maybe you need to get binoculars. There's so many people. It seems like there is so much that we need to pray about, isn't there? There's so many people requesting prayer for their situations, and the Lord knows all of them. Um, and he has enough strength, enough power, um, uh, enough uh, influence to be in all of those situations at the same time, as well as whatever is on your heart, on your mind, and your family, and your friends. You know, sometimes uh, we feel like maybe my prayer request is so much less important than others, but to God, that's not true. And so um, I invite you today as, as we worship to bring your uh, prayer requests, your excitement, your, uh, your joys. I know we have a, a couple of uh, big victories this last week, um, some really great news. Bring that to the Lord. But um, for now, I'm going to invite Brian and uh, his worship team to come up and lead us in song. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to see your all smiling faces. Nice, cool weather. We could use some more rain. Let's pray for rain. Careful, last time we did that rain. Yeah, it rained, it rained a lot. Although Stafford didn't get much. But anyway, uh, prayer or not prayer requests. Maybe it is a prayer request. <laughs> <laughs> Birthdays and anniversaries. I don't have any on my list. For this coming week, is anybody going to fess up to any? No? Okay. Well, we'll go on then. Let's stand and praise the Lord this morning. <coughs> Come, now's the time to worship. Amen? Amen.
follow Jesus, celebrating his offer to be in relationship with us, his offer of forgiveness, his offer of his presence and his love. Will you go to the Lord in prayer with me today? Lord, we come to you and we thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for all that you have promised us and all that we know that you will do in the future. Lord, we, we lift up our, our needs to you. We lift up our triumphs to you. The best part of our week, Lord, we give that to you. We thank you. We celebrate with you. And as we bring the, the things in the future to you, as we bring these next couple of weeks to you, as we bring the people that come to mind who have requested prayer, Lord, each of these situations, we have no doubt that you will be with them. We have no doubt that you will be with the people, that you will be with Burl and with Peggy, that you will be with, with Gary. Lord, we, we just ask that, that you would make yourself known, that, that you would come, that you would partner with the things of this world, the things that are, that are happening, whether that is a medical procedure or doctors or specialists or just our future. Lord, we ask that you would be with us. We know that we can count on you. We know that we can trust you. We know that you have promised to never, ever leave us, to never, ever leave us alone, to never, ever turn your back on us. And so, Lord, even as we, we celebrate and, and ask for your, your favor in the future, Lord, we thank you because we know that you will be there. Lord, as we, as we turn our attention to the rest of this service, we ask that you would look on this service, that you would bless our time. We ask a special blessing on B. Lanning as we recognize her formally as, as a member of this church. Lord, we ask that you would help us as, as we welcome her into our family, not in a new capacity, but that we would be your representatives together. Lord, as we leave this building, we ask that you again would enable us to bring your light into every corner of this world that we would poke holes of light in the darkness, that we would bring your message of love and that we would glorify you. Lord, uh, as we think about uh, our friends and the people from Kansas that are in Brazil that just arrived, on that very mission to bring your message, to bring your love to people, Lord, we ask that you would bless them, bless their time. That, that you would uh, send your message through them, whether that is through a language barrier or through actions, through a simple smile. Lord, we ask that you would watch over them, that you would keep them safe, that you would protect them, that you would give them traveling mercies in country and also as they return home to our friends and their families. Lord, we trust you and we, we know that they are there on your mission. And so, Lord, we just give that to you and we are excited for you to reveal what you have for this small time together. Lord, we ask all of these in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. Would the uh, ushers please come forward.
pray with me? Lord, as we pause to return a portion of the blessings that you have given us, we ask that you would accept these gifts, that you would take them, that you would multiply them for your use in the kingdom, that they would be sufficient for your work. Lord, we ask your blessing on those charged with administrating this, that, that we would be good stewards of your gifts. Lord, we ask that you would bless the giver and those who receive blessing. We ask all this in Jesus' name. This time I'm going to uh, invite B to come down. B and I have been talking for quite some time about uh, membership in the church. Um, and this is a special day. It's really a handshake day um, to, to celebrate publicly um, uh, joining this church. And so um, there is some liturgy. I'll be reading from the manual of the Church of the Nazarene. Um, it is expected that the prospective members have professed the Christian faith and have been instructed in the doctrine and practices of the Church of the Nazarene. And I can tell you that B and I have, have talked, we have met, we have sent messages back and forth, and uh, we have discussed the doctrines and practice of the Church of the Nazarene. And so the privileges and blessings that we have in community together with the Church of Jesus Christ are sacred and precious. There is in it such hallowed relationship as fellowship, care, and counsel that cannot otherwise be known apart from the family of God. There is the godly care of pastors with the teachings of the word and the inspiration of corporate worship. There is cooperation in service, accomplishing that which cannot otherwise be done. Today we again affirm the doctrines and practices of the church. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe that human beings are born in sin, that they need the work of forgiveness through Christ and through the new birth by the Holy Spirit. That subsequent to this there is a deeper work of heart cleansing or entire sanctification through the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and that to each of these works of grace, the Holy Spirit gives witness. We believe that our Lord will return, the dead shall be raised, and that all shall come to final judgment with its rewards and punishments. B, I would ask, do you heartily believe these truths? And if so, answer, I do. I do. <laughs> do you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and believe that he saves you now? If so, answer, I do by faith. I do by faith. All right. And so desiring to unite with the Church of the Nazarene, do you commit to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind and strength, and your neighbor as yourself, as expressed by the covenants of Christian character and conduct? Do you commit to the mission of God, as expressed in the doctrine, fellowship, and work of the Church of the Nazarene? Will you support the teachings of the Church of the Nazarene and strive with God's help to grow in your understanding and practice of the same in a way that enhances the witness of the church. Will you endeavor in every way to glorify God by a humble walk, godly conversation, and holy service, by devotedly giving of your resources, by faithfully participating in the means of grace? Will you follow Jesus Christ all the days of your life, abstain from all evil, and seek earnestly to perfect holiness of heart and life in the fear of the Lord? And if so, say, I will. I will. Uh, that's a joy to welcome you into fellowship in the Church of the Nazarene and into uh, Pleasant Hill Church of the Nazarene. Thank you. Congratulations. Let's give her a hand. Can I walk you back? Sure. Why not? Right. Why not? Right. Yes. Well, I think Brian and his team have a, a few songs uh, to worship with us. <laughs> Yeah. 
few Sundays we've been following one of the great patriarchs of the church, the founder and father of the Israelite nation, Abraham. I've used the word covenant, I've used um, the, the phrase unbreakable promise, and I've used them really interchangeably. Uh, Genesis chapter 12 tells us of a man named Abram who was approached by God when he was 75 years old. 24 years later, Genesis chapter 17 tells us that when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty, El Shaddai. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless, then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. So God came to this man and made some promises to be, to be with him, to bless him, and they entered into covenant relationship, and God said, walk before me and be blameless. Last week, we looked at Genesis chapter 18, when God came back to, to Abram and his wife, Sarai. God came with two angels and, and confirmed to, to Abram that, that he and Sarai will have a son, that they will have descendants. In fact, he uh, changed their names from Abram to Abraham, meaning the father of many, and from Sarai, meaning my princess, to Sarah, meaning princess to many. And so God came back to Abraham and to Sarah and again confirmed his promise, his covenant. And all the while, um, the, the, the promises of God were true. The promises of God that, that said that this covenant, this promise is for you and all of your descendants, for all who will come after me. And again, God had said, walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Now, God didn't give a whole lot more instruction in that. He didn't give a whole lot more information of what walk before me faithfully and be blameless might 
mean? How to, to lead a blameless life? Now, today in the Church of the Nazarene, we might, might use the word holiness or a holy life, a, a life devoted to God and, and judged blameless by Him. Sounds good, right? Sounds pretty hard, doesn't it? In fact, it sounds almost impossible because we know that it is. That, that without God's help, we can't even follow those few words of instructions, walk with me faithfully and be blameless. Um, but today, I want to look at a continuation of this story as, as, uh, as we read through what we call the book of Genesis, and we read through it uh, maybe chapter by chapter and verse by verse. We realize it is all part of one story. It is all part of the story of God and his people. It is all married together. And so um, I know that we, uh, we only have a short amount of time. I'm glad that it's time change. Uh, I was reminded this week that, that time change means that pastors get one extra hour to preach. Is, is that true? Think? Maybe. Maybe not. All right. Well, either way. But see, this is all part of one story. And these promises are still true. The promises are still good that, that God made to Abram as he changed his name to Abraham and said that these promises are good for you and your descendants. And so if you'd like to turn with me either in your, your paper Bible or in your digital Bible and your favorite translation to the book of Exodus, we're going one whole book later. So second book of the Bible, Exodus chapter 19 is where we're going to be today. Now we catch up with um, a group of people called the Israelites. Now, um, these are the, the nation of, of Israel, the descendants of Abraham. Um, now, it's, it's a pretty short um, line from Abraham to the Israelites, okay? Because Abraham, his son was, was Isaac. Isaac had a son, Jacob. Jacob means one who grabs the heel, and actually, it's kind of a kind of a slam in in Hebrew. It means uh, uh, one who cheats or or holds on to the back or or gets ahead by by grabbing what's in front of him. And so, um, Jacob is not exactly, or, or Isaac is not exactly a a, a, a a proud name. And the Lord changed his name, changed Jacob's name to uh, to Israel. Israel meaning. God leaves. And then um, after that, we have what's well, up on the screen. We have uh, Levi, Kohath, Amram, and then Moses, the leader of the nation of Israel. So um, this lineage from Abraham, the, the leaders of his group are now called the Israelites. They're, they're not called the, the Abrahamites or the Jacobites, but uh, they are called the Israelites. But, but these are the same people that are enjoying the blessing given to Abraham and his descendants. Okay, so, so the Israelites, Jacob's clan, uh, they've had some history as a group. They, they uh, went to Egypt. There was a famine. Uh, they lived there. They were enslaved. They, they were freed, again, by one of Abraham's descendants, Moses, as their leader, a direct descendant of Abraham. And so we're still in that same family tree, that same relationship that God had with Abraham, that same covenant is good for the Israelites, the nation of Israel led by Moses. So um, if we look at Exodus chapter 19, I'm going to start today in, in verse 1. And just read through the, the first six verses. On the first day of the third month, after the Israelites left Jesus, on that very day, they came to the desert of Sinai. After they set out from Rephidim, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, from a place, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did in Egypt and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. 
Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So, um, so here they are. The nation um, of Israel is, is, is doing their thing. They're, they're, they're led out of captivity by a man named Moses. Um, they're freed. They're, they're following God. And, and the leader, Moses, goes to talk to God. And God again says, I'll tell you what to do. I will lead you. And I'll tell you what to do. And God says, in fact, if you will obey all of my commandments, all the things that I say, if you will live in covenant with me, then you will be my special, treasured, loved nation. Out of the whole earth, the Lord reminds him, he says, you know, the, the whole earth is mine, but you are special and you are set apart special to me. You are treasured. And here's that word again, covenant. Remember, God made a covenant with Abraham. He promised to give him descendants. He promised to give him family. He promised to give him land. Promised to give him permanent home and blessing. He promised to bless others through him. And all of it implies God's continued presence his provision, his protection, his watchful, careful eye. And remember, God promised Abraham that this would be good throughout history, not just for that one man, Abraham, not just him and his son or he and his son and his, his grandsons and their family, but said all of the people, and God said all the people on earth will be blessed through your name, and here we are today doing that very thing. That's a lot of history. Now, from, from that time, from the time of Exodus chapter 19, remember this is all one story, up until now is still one continuous story. That covenant is still good. The, the, the terms of that covenant, walk before me and be blameless, that you will be a, a treasured nation, that you will be my special people, the Lord said. You're going to be uh, favored. You'll be, be my favorite. You'll be um, not only a possession, but my treasured possession. Do you have a few treasured possessions? If you think about it, maybe, maybe you do. Maybe you have a, a couple of favorite things, and sometimes that changes here and there. Um, I had a favorite toy as a boy. Uh, I had several of them, but one that I, that I can remember. Um, I had an Evil Knievel action figure. Remember Evil Knievel? He was in his, his white jumpsuit with the, the, the blue and, and white and red kind of cross stripes, kind of an American flag looking thing. Had his motorcycle. Now, when it was new, you could hook the motorcycle up to this little thing, and maybe you had one of these, and you could wind the, the wheel, and it would wind the back wheel of the motorcycle, and pretty soon it would just take off with Evil Knievel. I thought that was so cool. <laughs> It was so cool, I wore out the gears on the winder for the motorcycle and had to kind of push it myself, but it still was one of my favorites. Now my, my girls thought I was uh, kind of nuts a couple of years ago. Um, we were in Idaho and happened to stop at uh, Twin Falls at the Snake River, and I didn't put it together until I saw the little sign that says, uh, 1.2 miles down there is a place where Evil Knievel jumped the Snake River. And I went, oh, how cool. All of a sudden, I'm like eight years old again. Like, we have to go. It was cooler than I thought it was going to look. You know, when we got to this spot, it looked like the rest of the river. <laughs> Maybe I would be better off not doing that. I don't know. See, there's some treasured things. Um, sometimes that's a, that's a car. Sometimes it's a keepsake. It's something that reminds you of the past. Often it's something that, that's well-worn, that, that, that you have had for a long time. Maybe you have some history together. 
Um, and, and, and treasured things kind of come and go, and sometimes it's because of um, where it came from or what it means to you, but it's something special. Sometimes it's not the fanciest or shiniest thing, but it's still treasured. And God says that his people will be his treasured possession. Now, sometimes it's easy to think, um, if, if I'm going to be God's treasured possession, that, that we have to be the shiniest marble in the bag. That's not usually the treasured possession, is it? The most expensive um, gift there is, the, the best of the best of the best. Usually a treasured possession is something that means something to you personally. You have a relationship and a history. And I, and I think that's what God is talking about when he says, you will be my treasured possession forever. And again, we, we, we tend to, to gloss over the part where, where God says, if you will obey me and fully keep my covenant, and we, we jump forward to the, the treasured possession because that's fun, but, but God laid out this, this thing. He said, here's the plan. The covenant is keep all of my commands and provisions. Now, um, if you are uh, a little bit of a biblical scholar, you realize when I said Exodus 19, that you're thinking, wait a minute, is that about the place of the Ten Commandments? That it is, almost. God gives Moses the Ten Commandments uh, in what we have termed Exodus chapter 20. It's kind of on the, on the very next page, right after God has told Moses, if you will keep all of my commands, you'll be good. If you'll do all of these things, then, then my covenant will be fulfilled. And then, then God gives Moses some instructions. We call them the Ten Commandments. In fact, God's instructions are written in what we call chapter 20 and 21 and 22 and 23 of Exodus. And then, and then again in Deuteronomy, they're, they're recounted. So all of these things, all of these provisions are are. are terms to keep that covenant, their ways to uphold Abraham's part of the deal. Abraham's thing, his part of this covenant, remember a covenant is, is a two-party agreement. It, it's an unbreakable promise between two different parties and each of them brings something to the other. Well, God brought his blessing, his presence, his promise of, of protection, his promise of land, his promise of descendants. He added to that with Abraham and Sarah and said that from your descendants will come nations and kings, plural. That's a pretty fantastic promise when you don't have a single son, isn't it? That's why Sarah laughed. We talked about that last week. Sarah chuckled to herself. She thought, well, that's just so ridiculous. It's almost funny how much God promises to bless me. And, and we see that, that, that the Lord says, you laugh, but nothing is impossible. And so all of those words, all of those promises of God, are still good. Even generations later, with Moses, the, the promise, the unbreakable covenant that the Lord had made with Abraham and with all of Abraham's descendants were still good at the time of Moses. It was still a valid contract. It was still a valid offer. Now, the, the offer wasn't for five generations or for six generations or seven generations. The Lord said, this is an everlasting covenant forever for you and all of your descendants. All who will come after you, this is my promise. Interesting how things work out. See, we, we, we've been given the right to be adopted into that family, haven't we? We've been given the right to be adopted into the family of Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses, into the family of the Israelites. We've been given that right not because of things that happened in the Old Testament, not because of things in Exodus, that the offer was still good, but we've been given that right by the Son of God himself, Jesus Christ. 
offers us into that same covenant relationship that was offered to Moses. It's that same covenant relationship that God came to Abram and said, walk before me and be blameless and I will be your God forever and forever and forever and all of your descendants and all of your people. And generations later, Jesus gave us the right to also have that benefit. And that's why we're here to worship Jesus. Many of us, we can trace our, our family tree back at least one generation or two generations or three or four, but trying to trace our, our lineage all the way back to the time of Moses would be pretty much impossible. But we know through faith that we have been invited into this community, not because of our family tree or our parents, but because of our personal invitation from the Lord himself, from Jesus. Now this morning we celebrated um, as B became part of our church family officially. That's awesome, that's so cool. And, and, and I read from the manual some things about, about uh, privileges of membership and, and I wanna tell you, every time I read through there, I think, wow, that sounds like a really good deal. And then I think, well, did you get that before you were a member? In a way. We still love you. But, but as, a, as a member, it's a commitment that says, I am making my commitment to be part of that. I'll make my commitment to accept this love, to accept these benefits. And I want to identify myself with that. It's the same idea when we were adopted into God's family through Jesus Christ. It is the same idea, the same covenant that the Lord promises to us to be present, to be with us, to watch after us. See, all those things were, were implied when the Lord said, I will give you descendants. I will give you land and permanence. I will be your God and you will be my people. Um, and that, that all kind of boils down to, I will be with you. I will not leave you. We read that over and over and over throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. And today we're here to celebrate Jesus Christ, who also was part of that covenant relationship when he came to us and said, believe in me and I will welcome you in also into this covenant. Now, now here in a little bit, I want to bring this, uh, bring this full circle. We sang that, that I am glad I'm part of the family of God because of Jesus Christ, because Jesus invited us in. And, and throughout these, these different um, times of, of invitation and acceptance, God has come to people. God approached Abraham. God approached him when his name was still Abram. God came to Moses. God continues to come to us to offer the same benefits of that covenant that he made with Abraham. It's good for us as well. The promise that, that he will be our guide and our God and we will be his people. A promise of permanence, land that we won't have to wander around as, as people that have no, no home. We have a home that's given to us. Now, now, that may not be here in Sylvia, Kansas, or, or wherever you're joining us on the internet, but we have a permanent home in heaven with the Lord for eternity. Now, I don't think that, that Moses, I don't think that, that Abraham was thinking about eternity. They were thinking about tomorrow. They were thinking about this generation or maybe setting up the next couple of generations. And God's plan was bigger than that. Doesn't it always work out that way? God's plan seems to always be bigger than my plan. Have you ever noticed that? That, that God seems to have a, a bigger purpose than I, than I could have in mind, bigger than I could ever dream. And, and I think when we, when we step back and look at um, specific times when the Lord came to people and offered his relationship to them, we can trace the same promises back to Abraham. 
and realize that we have been given that same right to be his people. Uh, the same promises given to Moses that you will be my treasured possession. What do you do with a treasured possession? You, you take care of it. You know where it is. You want to go back to it and, and, and check up on it. I wish I still had my evil, evil motorcycle. I don't think I'd ever want to sell it. I think I just want to play with it. <laughs> Tell you the truth, it probably, I don't know if it's worth money or not because after three boys played with Evil Knievel, he was pretty well worn out. <laughs> but man, I think I would enjoy just checking in with good old Evil Knievel. Maybe maybe something came to your mind that that um, that you've had for a while that you just like to to check in on and say you know what I really like that that just feels good that we are together again we have this history and this relationship and it's the same thing the Lord comes to us and says I treasure you I love you I love you so much that I won't leave you alone. I love you so much that I'll watch over and protect you. I love you so much that I'll give you a permanent home later. I promise I'm, I'm making this ready. Now, now, we know through the teachings of Jesus that the Lord promises us heaven, promises us um, a time where we are with him forever and ever and ever. Not just this piece of ground right here in Kansas. Not just this grass and dirt. Not just um, the, the, the street. Not just my car, not just my family, not just my evil Knievel motorcycle, but God promises that, that I am his treasured possession. He knows where I'm at. He knows who I am. He still chooses to love me. He knows that, that maybe my wind-up doesn't giddy up and go the way it was when it was brand new. He knows that, that my outfit is not sparkly white like it was straight out of the pack. He knows that maybe my, my grip is a little bit loose on the, on the motorcycle grips. You know, sometimes my motorcycle falls over and the Lord says, I love you. I know where you are. I'm going to come back and check in on you. I want to watch over you. I want you to know I will never, ever, ever leave you. You know, the Lord showed his commitment to humanity when he sent his son, Jesus. Amen. He sent his one and only son for us so that, so that we could have that relationship, so that we could be, be declared blameless and holy and faithful and that we would fulfill that covenant not on our strength, not on, not on our authority, but on the authority of Jesus. Now here in a minute, we're going to celebrate um, what we call communion or the Lord's table, the Lord's supper. Maybe, maybe in, in your tradition, you have, you have heard it called Eucharist or, or whatever, but, but we celebrate as a, as a token and a remembrance of that time. And we celebrate it with, with a little bit of juice and a little bit of bread because that's how Jesus demonstrated this covenant relationship. Uh, in the Nazarene Church, we, we invite anyone to join us, whether you're present in the sanctuary or streaming online live or streaming later, because we believe that Jesus gave us that example. He gave us the example. He went to the people and he invited them into a relationship with him. He sat with people who were just people and he asked them to join us. Now, this communion supper, it was, it was instituted, it was, it was demonstrated by our Lord and Savior Jesus. We believe this to be a sacrament which proclaims his life, his sufferings, his death and his resurrection and hope of him coming again. And this shows forth his death until his return. We, we do this in remembrance of him. It's a means of grace where Jesus is present by his spirit. Is to be received in reverent appreciation and gratefulness for the work of Christ. We invite all who are truly repentant, who forsake their sins, who believe in Jesus for salvation, to participate in the death and resurrection of Christ. We come now to this.
communion table, that we may be renewed in life and salvation and be made one with the Spirit. With this, we confess our faith that Christ has died, that Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. And so we pray. Would you pray with me? Holy God, we gather here at your table in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who by your Spirit was anointed to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, to set at liberty those who were oppressed. Christ healed the sick, he fed the hungry, ate with sinners, and he established the new covenant for the forgiveness of sins. We live now in the hope of his coming again. On the night on which he was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples and said, drink from it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this always in remembrance of me. And so look, we gather here as the body of Christ to offer ourselves to you in praise and in thanksgiving. Lord, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these your gifts, that you would make them by the power of your Spirit to be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, Lord, make us one in Christ, one with each other and one in the ministry of Jesus to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. We ask this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> and now if you would join me as the Savior taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When we celebrate and we eat, we eat together. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you, may it preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. Eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and be thankful, the body of the Lord. And when we drink, we drink together. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for you May it preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ died for you and be thankful, the blood of the Lord. Pray with me, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for sending your son to fulfill your covenant, to offer us a new covenant of relationship with you through his shed blood. Lord, we ask that you would go with us as we go out of this world as your people, that we would glorify you in all that we do. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace in every way. The Lord be with you all, amen. Have a wonderful week. Thank you for coming. We hope you can come back next week, and I hope that you are blessed through this week.